it is a tough situation for the brands to be in. Um, these brands put out statements last year when the stories about the forced labor camps in Xinjiang first came out in the Western media. Um, most of these big brands put out statements decrying the conditions and pulling themselves away from Xinjiang. Those statements are now coming back against them um, from as the Chinese media dig it out. Um, one strategy which Inditex has chosen is just to lay low. Um, the company has actually pulled its straight statement against Xinjiang off the website and is just laying low. Now that again has led to backlash among Western um, consumer advocacy and labor advocacy groups um, suggesting that Inditex is taking advantage of the situation. Um, the other strategy is just to stick to, you, stick to your guns. I mean, H&M, we talked to H&M last week and they said, they have no intention of changing their stance. Um, and this is a stance that they have come to and feel good about and therefore then have to deal with the fallout that occurs in China. But it is a tough situation to be in. I don't expect the companies to change their stance on Xinjiang. Um, likewise, they probably won't be doubling down on it. They will be trying to hope that this blows over, trying to lay low for the most part and hope that consumers forget over a lot over the next few weeks and come back to shopping as normal as we have seen them do with past scandals i mean usually what we see is consumers mm. have a sharp backlash in the first couple of weeks and then it and then it subsides Oh, that's a, a great recap of what's happened. Um, thank you, and thank you for the update in terms of what the companies are saying. I guess one one point of leverage that the Western companies could turn to is um, the fact that any moves that they make to reduce dependence on China in terms of the supply chain could negatively impact Chinese consumers and, and Chinese workers, uh, the people that they employ. So to what extent do you think that actually serves as a, as a mitigant for these companies, the fact that they have this sort of leverage over um, the Chinese government in this way. If they do move to reduce their dependence there, it could, it could have a hit on China. Yeah, so, so I, I think they probably have less leverage than, than you might think because many of these companies have been closing stores in China. So if you look at H&M and Inditex, which are two of the big European retailers <clears throat> that are exposed here, they've both been closing stores in China to the tune of hundreds. And so to then make the argument that they're supporting Chinese store labor is, is a bit tricky to make. I think what's more likely is, is from a supply chain perspective. Um, most large apparel retailers source a lot of their production from China. And so to that extent, they are indeed supporting Chinese manufacturing, Chinese warehouse labor, et cetera. And so pulling out of that region would be quite detrimental, not only to the companies, but also to China. Uh, well, Anisha, just to pick up on the supply chain aspect, I mean, my understanding is that the uh, supply chain is, is very obscure when it comes to, to fashion because uh, there are so many different intermediaries in the process. So you have the retailer ordering from the supplier, the supplier ordering from the mill, the mill ordering the yarn, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, it can be traced back to a, a small factory in China. And so for many of these companies, it's actually quite difficult for them to ascertain the ultimate source of where that cotton is coming from. Do you think many of them are just taking the approach of let's just play it safe because of the lack of transparency for, for where that ultimate source is? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So you can have control over what you call your tier one suppliers, which are the ones that you as a retailer have direct contract contracts with, but then those supplies are often subcontracted out to a tier two or even a tier three, and then you have the ginners and the intermediaries, and then we get to the farmer. Um, so the, if the sort of farm to shop traceability is quite difficult to do. One retailer that has done it well, though on a small scale, is Primark, um, which has worked with an NGO to work directly with farmers in parts of India and South Asia and have 100% traceability to that source. But that's quite hard to do at scale. 